Uh, hello, can you show us some methods to blockade the streets and can you show us that, please? Yes, um, this first method is, is very simple. It's just using some old seat belt from cars or old climbing tape or any other webbing that you can get. Um, simply stitching in two loops, it can be worn under clothing um, and it can go through metal detectors so it can be used in airports, in big conferences that have airport style security. And all you do is you simply put your arm round the person next to you and put the hand through the loop and if you want you can twist and tighten the loop and then it's very difficult to pull you out. It's very strong because all the pressure is taken across the back so it's very very difficult to pull and the seat belt will break first before your arm comes out um, as happened here. The seat belt broke before they pulled the people apart. So that's very simple, very easy. Um, you have to make it for the right size for each person though. Very, very simple is a pair of simple handcuffs. Um, you can either start with them already on your wrist, they go in a pocket, nobody will know you're wearing them, and then you simply clip them over a railing, uh, a table leg, a pipe, a gate, and you're locked to it. Um, very, very simple, very, very easy. All of these handcuffs that you buy from army surplus stores, they, they have catches that release the handcuff, so you need to break the catch off, otherwise anybody can get you out. It can be quite painful to use these, because if you pull hard, it hurts a lot, but for a short time, they're good. Easy and quick and good. The next thing is to work with a partner and to use a bicycle D-lock. You simply put it round a solid object, like this railing. Just clip it on and take away the key. And now that is against their neck. Um, to get them off, you have to cut them very, very carefully to avoid hurting their neck. It's best if a friend takes the key from you so that the police can't simply look in your pockets and take the key away and unlock you. But that friend must stay where they can come and unlock you in an emergency. You can lock more than one person to each other using the same technique. So one person will have the lock on and simply by putting a lock through a second person can lock in there and a third person, a fourth person and so on. And it will take hydraulic cutters to break this, this lock. These can also be used on vehicles. You can put a lock through the vehicle, the chassis of a lorry, for example, and then another one round your neck and lock yourself underneath the vehicle to stop it moving. Although, obviously, if you're doing that, you need to make sure that you have support people to stop the vehicle first, because otherwise you could break your neck or get killed. So you need lots of support when you're using these, these bits of equipment. This is simply a piece of old plastic pipe. You can use metal pipe. If you can get metal, it's heavier, but it will last longer. It's harder to cut through. I don't know if you can see in there, but there's a pin down the middle of the pipe. In a metal pipe, you can weld it in. In a plastic pipe, it's just a, a nut and bolt. And you make a loop around the wrist with chain or tape and have a carabiner like this one on the end Put your hand down and clip the carabiner to the pin. And then a second person can clip into the middle. And now we're joined. And with a chain of people, you block the road. You can have a circle of people, which means that there's no one at the end, which is stronger. It's easier to break. But you can also use this 
um, with two tubes. Okay. I'm not sure how we're going to film this one. So you can put the tube, say, around the tire of a vehicle in the middle here, or a post or a gate, and that way you prevent that vehicle moving. Okay. Um, and police, again, will have to get equipment to cut you out of these, these tubes. Um, and they'll mean that you can stay in your blockade for an hour, two hours, possibly four or five hours longer than if you were just without any equipment. Can you say something about the treatment of the police when you block the streets or something like this? In Britain, the police um, vary a lot. Um, usually, they will try and negotiate first. Um, they will try and ask you to move out of the way, out of the road, um, give you the opportunity to protest somewhere where you're not blocking the road. But eventually, um, they will usually start arresting people and moving them if they can. If you are blockading in such a way that they can't move you without getting equipment to cut you out, um, you could be there for three or four hours before they, they start threatening you with arrest and, and possibly arresting you. Um, when they start moving you, uh, it varies from police officer to police officer. Um, you can expect that you might get hurt, so you should relax and, and try and protect yourself as best as possible. Um, they will normally have two to four police officers dragging you or carrying you. Um, and uh, if you won't move, they can resort to using pressure points. They can, with their thumbs, put pressure behind your ears or under your nose um, in order to cause pain to get you to move. Um, most people move at that point in time. However, they're not very good at finding the right place. So sometimes they just stick their thumb in your neck and it hurts a little bit, but it's okay. Um, so it, it, very mixed experience. It depends on which police you're dealing with and how tired they are. After they've moved 10 or 20 protesters, they're usually starting to get tired and they may just grab your hair and grab your clothes and throw you. Um, other times they're very careful, putting your head down very carefully. It varies a lot. And after the action and after you were in, in prison, something like this, um, what happens? Do you have to pay sometimes money or something like this? If you're in a road blockading, um, you would probably be arrested for something called obstructing the highway. Uh, that's a very minor charge. You'd get a fine for it, maybe 75 pounds, maybe up to 250 pounds. Some people pay it, some people never pay it. Yeah. If you don't pay it, eventually you may go to prison for a very short time, seven days maybe.